Hi, I'm Jim from Left Wing Libertarian. Hi, I'm Anna from BeautyGirlsMom.com. Today we're going to be talking to you about how to go to dinner at Disney <laughs> and so spend $1,000. We did that recently. But again, before we get started, we did spend $1,000, almost $1,000 on dinner at Walt Disney World, but we had a party of nine people. It was Christmas Day, and it was not at the food court at Pop Century. Um, this was at the Boathouse in the beautifully redone Disney Springs. Which Disney Springs, as you know, is the, the new name former or downtown, of Disney. downtown Disney. Absolutely amazing place. Lots of places to eat and enjoy. New venues to shop at. It's 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 wonderful. Or if you haven't been there in a long time, it's the rebranding, rebranding of Pleasure Island. It's, it's wonderful. Well worth a visit. But we are focusing primarily on our visit to the Boathouse, which is one of the newer restaurants. It's about a year old, a little over a year old. And This was your dose visit to the Boathouse? This was my second visit to the so Boathouse. So where is your review of your first visit? I did not do a review of our first visit. The Boathouse opened last December and we were there last March. So the restaurant had not been open very long. I want to say that our meal there was not the best meal that we've ever had at Walt Disney World. Well, I remember you looking at people's reviews thinking, I need someone else to post a bad review. I was Because you didn't want to be the only one. begging for somebody to post a bad review. I didn't want to be the one person that nitpicked everything to death, even though I don't think I nitpicked anything. But here's the thing. It is not inexpensive to eat at the boathouse. And if you're going and you're taking a party of, even your family of four, and looking at almost a $400 restaurant bill, you want to know that you've eaten a $400 meal. We did not have a $400 meal that day. We were rushed through. We had a server that left halfway through our meal. We were not explained anything about um, specials, uh, nothing about the boathouse itself. We didn't get the spiel. We didn't get the spiel. We knew there was a spiel because we could kind of hear other tables getting the spiel. We didn't get the spiel. Um, the best thing that happened to us that day was that our server left midway between in service because the server we got was way, way better, but it was already, we already had our entrees by that point. It was so, too late to reset yeah, the Yeah, there was no spiel going at that point. So based on our first experience there, I didn't want to say anything bad. Again, it was a brand new restaurant. You have to give some leeway where people are still trying to learn the menu they're still trying to feel out what customers are going to like or how a service is going to run i don't like to give a negative review that soon after a restaurant opens so this is trip dose and for this, this one do second. you have a negative review now or a positive i review? do not have a negative review and i don't want to say it's a glowingly positive review because i have another disney trip booked i do not have another boathouse reservation booked there are restaurants at Walt Disney World I could go to eat at every single trip. I look forward to them. I cannot recall a bad experience at any of them. And I want to go back and eat another meal there. I don't have that feeling with the Boathouse. I enjoyed this meal way better than I did my first meal. But it was just okay. It was just okay for me. The highlights of the meal were the oyster flights. Well, and the highlight of that is... Um, so. The boathouse is located at um, Disney Springs, and because we knew we were going to be drinking and we were staying on property, we took transportation. Mm -hmm. um, give yourself about, what, two to three minutes lead time for transportation? Give I waited until she had that go. <laughs> give yourself at least an hour. Again, there's still some parking chaos down there, um, so if you're driving yourself, you may even want to go longer than an hour, but even without the chaos, you don't know when a bus will arrive at your resort, so you want to make sure that you have time to get full. out there. Or be full. We were very lucky Christmas Day. We were running a little bit late, but as soon as we arrived at the bus stop at Bay Lake Tower, there was a bus pulling in. So we got Not right to correct you, the but there is no bus stop at Bay Lake Tower. The bus stop at Bay Lake Tower is over the Contemporary. Well, we were at Bay Lake Tower. Plus one for Jim. But we got on the bus right away, and we got over to Disney Springs right away. We did have to make kind of a sprint to the restaurant. We made it to our reservation exactly on time. And we then they said, minutes early. go wait for an hour. <laughs> no, we only waited. So I'm glad days. you had us racing. <clears throat> Handicap old man. <laughs> I did. I had my 79-year-old Kids wanted to ride rides. And um, but we did. We made it right on time. We checked in. Again, this was Christmas Day. You expect a little bit of a wait. 
we were a party of nine so there aren't a lot of seating options for a party that big they did seat us in about 30 minutes there are dose entrances to the boathouse there's the go this way and you go through the gift shop and all the souvenirs and the things to pick up mm -hmm. which some people got uh, couldn't resist and then you go through here and there's the bar yes which really it's not a bar it's a more of a um, I guess a tavern lounge kind of seating area. It also has tables around it. And then behind it is a whole outside seating area. Yeah, the outside deck. You get to watch them, um, the oysters. What do they call that? Shucking the oysters. You get to see all that right in front of you. Mm -hmm. uh, the waits, the bartender staff was very friendly, very uh, uh, entertaining. Whole array of televisions all around the bar that you can watch different shows, sporting events. Uh, we happened to be there on Christmas. And one of the things that uh, Bridget thought was very humorous was last christmas the ugly sweater that i bought for the entire family just one we all fit into it together um one of the people on the espn that day was wearing the same sweater so if you look on facebook you might have seen a picture of bridget uh, like, look, my sweater. it's not even an ugly sweater it was <laughs> no, a nice it's pretty cute sweater yeah we like that sweater um but the the you got to sit there we got drinks for everybody we went through the oyster flight which is a collection of six uh, different oysters uh, something to keep in mind it's fresh every day so if you get there too early it may not be unpacked and out if you get there too late it may be gone and there's also there may be a difference in what oysters are available on the oyster flight because it is it's fresh it's brought in every day yeah. and they do use the freshest oysters so they can't specifically order so many you know cohogs or whatever so going back to that thousand dollar pricing thing these were three to four dollars each for the oyster this is not your 25 cent oysters down at the local flea market on a saturday sunday no the oyster flight was about 25 dollars yeah. we did order several of them uh there were several of them ordered at the bar and then once we got to the table there were a few more extras that showed up a few more extras and then we ordered well, one that showed up and well i think what happened is they were so good at the bar and everybody was so hungry by that time that uh, Pop Pop ordered one as an appetizer. The kids that hadn't tried it thought his looked really good and he was really enjoying them, so they wanted them. So we did end up with even, you know, a couple more than we started off at the bar. But they were, they were, they were, I don't eat oysters, so I'm just giving you second hand. They were delicious, they were fresh, they were ice cold. Everybody that ate them really, really enjoyed them. And so we're not going to have the itemized receipt scrolling by here, but if you're keeping tabs at this point, so now we've got drinks for nine, and then we've got multiple $25 oyster flights. I would say there were easily five oyster flights ordered. Yeah. So, you know, you're looking at over $100 with that also. Yeah, plus the tip for the bartender and, you know, that sort but of But they were delicious. So Appetizers. now we're finally at our table. Finally at our table, our server was... You spent $200 plus, dollars. we're not even <laughs> at the table. Our server was phenomenal such a far cry from our previous experience he was knowledgeable he was thorough we got the spiel even though it was christmas day the place was a madhouse it was so packed uh, and he was he was patient he did not rush us into anything we got to sit there did you notice that when to... he was given the spiel there was like a bit of music playing behind him no yeah, it was a glockenspiel this if you goes, like that joke respond in the comments nowhere fast this goes nowhere fast it was a it, he was definitely the highlight of the meal he timed everything perfectly we were not rushed into anything he explained everything that anybody needed explained he offered to explain things without us having to say excuse me can you take the time to tell me what's in this what's not in this he really was very good and he paced things wonderfully we were wondering why again our table was delayed by 30 minutes we know why it was delayed 30 minutes this was a three-hour meal for us Yep. not because service was slow but because it was just paced so well and we all were just having a really good time the the courses were not one on top of another we staggered appetizers yeah we, we never had a case of the table was was overpacked with stuff no items. and he did the oyster flights and people got to enjoy those and then he brought the soups out and the appetizers everything was paced just really really well it was a wonderful wonderful dining experience in case you're wondering that block glockenspiel joke i thought of that improv on the, on the cuff there that wasn't pre-written or pre-planned i live with this every day so now we get to the actual we're sitting here we're having our meal and the lobster bisque which was a table popular item i would say our party of nine probably ordered five of them 
delicious. It and then, of course, whatever delicious. kids didn't order them wound up taking it from the parents anyway. It was creamy. It tasted like lobster. It had chunks of lobster in it. It was really good. I've had lobster bisque that was very thin, very runny, and you didn't really have a lobster taste. It was just like a fishy taste. This was really this was really not good. Campbell's from a can. This was clearly Definitely Progresso not. or something. <laughs> it was a good soup. We really enjoyed that. The appetizer at our end of the table, we ordered the fried calamari, which I think is just, just like a staple. Our kids really like the calamari. They loved it. it. It's a chili calamari, a hoisin sauce chili calamari, so it does have a little bit of heat to it. I don't eat spicy food, but I really did like the heat. I think it added an extra little kick to it, and the hoisin sauce was really good with it. Yeah, this was also a... Uh a fresh calamari and it was lightly battered and lightly fried it wasn't the uh, you know the over crispy sort of you know at the uh, your local uh, pizza parlor sort of thing and definitely not a rubbery texture to the calamari the calamari itself was very delicate like sometimes you get really thick hunky pieces that like you can't chew through this was just really really pleasant <laughs> we know calamari because years ago we had a Wii and on the Wii we played that game what's that like mama Dad, cooking cooking mama, cooking mama. Yeah, yeah. I know my calamari yeah we know how to prepare calamari Wicked man Wii skills. you hold it like this and hold it like that and go <laughs> calamari <laughs> so we don't know what other appetizers were ordered because our table was too big yeah the tables were at the other end and I mean it was, it was uh, at the other end uh, there were some fish tacos ordered I think but I don't know if that was as an appetizer or as part of a meal but now we get to our entrees what do you remember what you ordered even uh, some kind of steak thing something oh no maybe I ordered a crab I'd have to go look on the receipt this is what tells me I don't need to rush back to the boathouse I remember what I ordered I had the filet Oscar. Which I had on the on visit. On previous Uno. visit. The filet Oscar, for those that don't know, is a filet mignon that is supposed to be I didn't topped, know when I ordered it. Supposed to be topped with lump crab meat, and then it is covered with a Bernays sauce, and the whole thing is put into the oven so that the Bernays sauce and the crab meat kind of combines to make this really creamy, almost like a sauce in and of itself on top of the filet. My filet was perfectly cooked. I ordered it medium but not a lot of seasoning. When, when I go to a steakhouse, and the boathouse is owned by Gibson, which is a very huge name, especially out in the Midwest Chicago area. It's a very big name in steakhouse, so steakhouses. So you would expect your steak to be steakhouse steak. It didn't have a lot of flavor. I like to order a steak <coughs> when I'm out because I have a really hard time capturing that steakhouse flavor at home. Uh, I cook steaks on the grill out there, what do you mean? This had more of a home flavor. You don't like the steaks I cook in the room? This had more of a home flavor. Needed a little salt and pepper to actually bring up the flavor of the If meat. you can see the actual tears that I'm crying right now, respond in the comments. Uh, the crab meat on top was ice cold, which was weird. It was just weird. It should not have been ice cold. It should have been melted in this creamy, delicious sauce. The sauce on top of the crab meat I can't tell whether it started out as cold. Maybe that's their style. It's supposed to be a cold crab meat. It's not supposed to be a cold crab meat. It's supposed to be warm. Don't call it filet Oscar if it's not going to be what people expect. I didn't love it. The steak was okay. There was nothing wrong with it. Again, it just needed, for my taste, a little more seasoning. I did pick the crab meat out of the sauce. The crab meat was fresh. It was delicious. But it was more like it needed to be in a crab salad. It was ice cold crab meat. I want my crab meat on my filet Oscar to be warm, to be like just melting with this sauce. I want it all to be blended together. I didn't have that experience. It was okay. There was nothing wrong with it, but it's a $53 entree. Now, if so she's confusing filet Oscar with filet Big Bird, where Big Bird is the hot crab, please respond in the comments. Let us know. No, I'm not. I know. I know my filet Oscar. So it was an okay dish. Granuel ordered the stuffed lobster, which she ordered on our first visit. First of all, she's 10. She doesn't know good stuffed lobster from bad stuffed lobster. We, however, do know good stuffed lobster. But it looked <coughs> it looked good. She really enjoyed it. Um, good, stuffed lobster, good stuffed lobster comes from anglers, anglers up in Maine. Maine. It is the most banger. delicious, succulent mm. stuffed lobster ever anywhere. They take a lobster, but, and then they put another lobster on top of it. <laughs> Having not eaten this stuffed lobster, I can't say whether it was good or bad, but Granuel absolutely loved it. It didn't have any kind of a foul smell, so you knew that it was like a freshly prepared lobster, fresh cooked lobster. 
And it looked good. Or in December, good. we know it was fresh. I mean, well, no. It I looked good. Didn't have claws. It could have been a, uh, we don't know if it was a I'm just saying, it's not, like, it didn't have that fishy odor that sometimes, you know, seafood, especially if you go to a seafood house that's not real busy, real popular, it has, like, a smell that it shouldn't be cooked. It acquires it over time. It acquires it. But no, this, this was really, really good. Well prepared. Eilish ordered the lobster roll, which, again, for Christmas Day was kind of an odd choice but there are sandwiches on the menu at both lunch and dinner you can order sliders burger sliders she loved the lobster roll and it looked really good the lobster the bun was lightly toasted not to bash another review but i think if you're reviewing the boathouse you really have to review the the, the things that they're specialty for um so like eilish's slider thing eilish like had the lobster the lobster roll. roll like that's more of like what the because uh, we have the, the other half of the family came back the next day and went there for lunch so like they went to the bar, they had the lunch kind of stuff, and then they also had the oyster flights again. Mm -hmm. So like that's more of like if you're reviewing the boathouse as a lunch joint, that's sort of the stuff to get. Yeah, I and would I think, think I would think the sandwiches and stuff would be more popular at lunchtime. Yeah, the seafood tacos, kind of lunch and dinner. Kind of lunch and dinner. The seafood tacos, very very highly rated. Everything at the table was given a good to excellent review. Yeah, my fillet was good excellent definitely not and you can't even remember for sure what you ate no we were Which there says having a good to me meal. that it was okay there was nothing wrong with it yeah. i remember because the oysters doesn't... though i remember going you to the bar the i oysters. remember the you know the calamari everything up to that point i remember and then the entree was because again most of the time my entree is uh anna the restaurant's too dark i can't read the menu pick two things and i'll take the other one yeah so I, what was I the other remember, thing you wanted i don't remember what you chose which means that you know it was not an outstanding meal. The goat cheese ravioli at California Grill, I would go back for that every single time I'm at Walt Disney World. I love, love that goat cheese ravioli. I I don't, like nothing at the boathouse except that oyster flight is that kind of a thing. It's not jumping out. It doesn't well, stand see, out are we, as amazing. Yeah, but is, is the, the oyster flight at the boathouse becoming the peanut butter and jelly milkshake at... At 50's Prime At 50 Prime, Prime Cafe. Or the mushroom soup at... Artist Point. Yeah. Or the I wonderful dinner at... The wonderful dinner at... I don't the know. Jolly Holiday Celebration. <laughs> Which they haven't done in about 20 years. We're waiting I for I don't them. even know. I know. I went there when I was nine for the first back. time. <laughs> You're so funny. I just... If you think I, I'm funny, respond <clears> in the comments. The only reviews I have seen of the boathouse are amazing stunning phenomenal best meal on walt disney world property the negative reviews that i've seen focus primarily on price i don't care how much a meal costs me if i love that meal if it's a meal that i'm gonna remember for a long time i don't care if i've paid sixty dollars for my entree i don't care if you're gonna charge me nine dollars for the plate of mashed potatoes to have on the side which by the way our table did order macaroni and cheese as a side dish only because the waiter raved about how delicious it was. It was $9 for a side portion, but the portion easily went around our table, mostly because they were full on oysters and lobster bisque. The macaroni and cheese, they all said it was very, very good. Not something I would probably order going back, only because <laughs> I think what they give you for the entree is a substantial amount of food. Okay, I don't so, think you need to order the extra sides. And again, I think that's part of that reality of what is the expectation when you go? We went with a party of nine. We have a thousand dollar bill at the end of the night. Mm -hmm. um, when we compare steak joints, are we talking about the pub, which is a very good steak joint, but it has a bad, it has an, it's an old dated atmosphere. Mm -hmm. The atmosphere has just never fixed itself up. But the steak and seafood is is just as good as it was. Well, years and, ago. you know, here's a comparison: fifty three dollars for the steak Oscar for the fillet Oscar. The boat or the uh, pub has a dish called the carpet bagger, which is very similar to a fillet Oscar, with the exception of it does not have asparagus, which fillet Oscar has. I would order the carpet bagger again. It's in the thirty-five, thirty-eight dollar range, so it does come in less expensive than what I had. I find the flavors of the carpet bagger better than the flavors that I had of the steak at the boathouse. So is that just the Disney premium then? I don't think it's a Disney premium. I think the Boathouse, again, being a Gibson restaurant, is 
an upscale steakhouse dining experience with a raw bar. Okay, well here's where, again, if we're going then to the next notch of steakhouse, I compare it to when I took you out to dinner in Milwaukee one night. Moe's Steakhouse, yes. yeah. one of the best meals I've ever eaten. And again, how many years are we going back? Well, it's a couple of years. I can tell you what we had at Moe's. I can describe the meal. I know what we ate there because you can describe it the was, plate that showed up with all the different with cuts all of the meat. different. Yeah, I that was a steakhouse. That was yeah, a upscale I steakhouse. enjoyed that meal. I remember that meal, and we're talking nine or ten years ago, like you said. He can't even remember from December, and it's January, and we're not even at January 25th, so it's not even a month. He can't even remember what he ate. If I'm going to spend $100 per person on a meal, which is essentially what we did at the boathouse, I want it to be a memorable meal. I want Now, it this to could be, be because of all the beatings meal. that she's beaten me on over the years. It's had its effect over time. But no. no, it hasn't. There's nothing wrong. If I need to be beat more, please leave some in the comments. There's nothing wrong with the food at the boathouse. I just don't think anything that we've eaten so far has reached that level of this is a phenomenal meal. And we've had those meals at Walt Disney World. I want to go back to the California Grill. We've had phenomenal meals there. We've had phenomenal meals at Gico. Oh, my favorite the meal at the California Grill was Gico. on the 4th of July that one year. The filet mignon at Gico. That's a steak that I would go back for again and again. We do go back to Artist Point. Yeah, the big draw there is everyone at our table loves that cream of mushroom soup. But it's the atmosphere, it's the soup. whole sitting thing. It's I've whole... enjoyed my meal there. Um, we have I, a, here. I guess here's the other thing. We have had this uh, measuring stick of how good things are ever since we've been together. Mm -hmm. And that measuring stick started when we went to... The Hotel DuPont. Yep. And we had dinner at the Green Room. The Green Room at the Hotel DuPont, yeah. which for our area, because there's not everybody knows the Hotel DuPont or the Green Room, it was a very upscale, well-known dining experience. Yep. It I was a think, trip to go. I, mean, I think a... in our almost 30 years together, the Philadelphia dining scene really has exploded with more celebrity chefs, more upscale dining, a variety of dining options. Philadelphia, when we were younger... It was the different neighborhoods and the different Italian restaurants. I think it's it's really boomed over the time that we've been together. Like one of the best Italian restaurants I ever went to in Center City was um, a, a, a vacant lot, a bunch of homeless people, a dumpster, this door going downstairs to one of the best restaurants in Philly, and then more homeless people, dumpsters, and traffic. If you didn't know it was there, you would have never gone there. And it was the same thing with some of the restaurants in the Bronx. If you didn't know where they were, and someone didn't take you there, you didn't even know where to park your car, let alone how to get in the place. Yeah. And it's that sort of very neighborhood culturally driven. It was. And I think But there are now restaurants that everybody goes to. You know, you could come down from New York City having all of those great dining experiences in New York City and find similar experiences in Philadelphia. I think that's that really has burst over the last few years. That has just blossomed into this you know this this amazingly culturally diverse. I don't I don't know if it's still open, but one of the best Italian experience. restaurants in the Orlando area is right across the street from Sea World's Water Park. I think it was called Chow Italia yeah. or something. But in a strip mall, in you a would strip have never mall, mom and pop. It really I mean we had some really delicious meals there, and again it was it was a very evenly paced, no rushing, homemade pasta, really good dining experience. I can describe the meals that we've yeah. eaten. White tablecloth, linen, some wonderful waiters. But again, these are meals that I can describe. You cannot tell me what you had for dinner. Yeah, I can at actually. At the boathouse. Bruno's is our local pizza joint. I can call Bruno's, and if we want takeout, I can describe something to him that they made for us, and their answer is going to be, you know, that's not on the menu, but we have enough to make it for you. I mean, it's that sort of. And I guess that's the thing when you start talking about a restaurant getting top scale or top stars is, is it a memorable experience that you can't wait to go back again? And I think that's for us what the boathouse is lacking. There's nothing wrong with the food. Some of the food is actually stellar. The oysters, we'll harken back to the oysters. You can't get that experience anywhere else at Walt Disney World. Well, let's, not, let's finish say, with dessert because we have dessert. Oh, we, and dessert. Yeah. 
Most of the people were full, so we didn't go overboard with the desserts. Most people got the uh, mason jar. Key lime pie, which comes in a mason jar. It's way too much pie for any one individual. It is, you know, a full-size canning jar, and it is full three-quarters of the way with key lime pie. Very delicious, but we winded up. Everybody just shared it. Yeah, everybody just shared it. We had a kid who desperately wanted to try the baked Alaska. Everyone was so full. And the baked Alaska, it comes piled high. It's a $40 dessert. Easily would have fed our entire table. At that point, yeah. No one was that hungry. No yeah, I mean, that's that's also one of those things that we've kind of talked about over the years has been you go to a really good restaurant for a really good meal, you walk out without dessert. I mean, it's never... Sometimes you walk out without dessert. Yeah. Sometimes you walk out. Sometimes you just, you have to go for it. Everything has been so amazing and phenomenal. You just have to have that little literal icing on the cake. You just have to have that extra level because everything has been so great. Take it or leave it desserts at the boathouse. Yeah. Take it or leave it. We were full and nothing was so spectacular that anybody said, oh my gosh, let's just see the dessert. Let's just try the dessert. So unlike other boathouse okay. reviews where somebody may have gone and spent $30 or $20, $30 per person, uh, we went and spent over $100 a person. <laughs> we have a $1,000 bill at the boathouse. Uh, three or four Mickey bars? I would say out of five, I would go three. I would go three. Service is impeccable. You, you're not going to find which service would push like it, that which anywhere. That would push it to a four. The oyster flights in the bar, that would push I it to a four. I would go to a four. But again, I don't eat the oysters. Um, and the three stars is primarily for the service. There's nothing wrong with the food. I just don't think there's anything Oh my God, I have to go back food gasm delicious at the boathouse. Not anything that we've tried so far. Is that a Disney safe word? I, I, you know, there's nothing there that I, right now, a month later, am saying, I really, really want to go back for that. Let me get online right now and look at my upcoming trip and see if there's, I know there's openings at the boathouse. I've seen them when I'm looking for openings at restaurants I want to go to. I just, I, you know, I, if somebody said, meet me for lunch at the boathouse, all right, I'll meet you for lunch at the boathouse. So now here's if somebody says, where do you want to go? I don't think the boathouse is coming up on my radar. So I guess the other way to look at this is um, we got off the bus and we were walking towards the boathouse. And the day before, we ate at Raglan Road. Mm -hmm. Raglan Road is a place we go back to all the time. Mm -hmm. Do you go back there for the food? Do you go back for the atmosphere? Do you go back because Bridget won the Irish dance competition one time? We go back there for a combination of things. I will say that my stepfather and my sister and my my brother-in-law preferred the meal at the boathouse to Raglan Road. They didn't have anything really raving to say about Raglan Road. I like it for the overall experience. But again, if I want to recommend Christmas Day dinner... I wouldn't go to Raglan Road. I want a dining experience. I want the California Grill. I want Narcoosies. I want Citricos. I want somewhere where I know here's I'm the other part, this though. wonderful meal. Christmas Eve, we're standing at Raglan Road, and we're done, and we're outside talking before we head back to walk around, you know, just to walk around and see stuff. And Anna makes a comment to the two younger children that we'll be back here tomorrow night for dinner. Both of them turned to the restaurant right here and said, I'm getting the ribs. Morimoto. Morimoto uh, was, that was, right after it opened, an amazing dining experience. So look on the I channel for the I want to say, though, Morimoto now that we bring up Morimoto's, we lost our server midway through our meal at Morimoto's. Not only did we lose our server, we were right near where, like, the manager's stand was, and the manager was standing there and turned to one of the other waiters and said, where's so-and-so? Have you seen him? Where, where did he go? Um, doesn't he have tables? Is he on a break? Do we know where he is? We overheard a conversation where they literally lost our waiter. I don't know if he just walked out a back door or just... Connect something. <clears throat> he just disappeared. But aside... The meal was so good that we weren't searching for We didn't even care. We didn't even care. Everything we ate at Morimoto was phenomenal. Again, that to me is the mark of a, of a delicious meal. We didn't pay nearly as much per person at Morimoto as we did at the boathouse, but I can tell you... Have you done the Morimoto review yet? I don't know if we have. I can tell you... Look for you another video on Morimoto. ...what every morsel of food at Morimoto tasted like. It was that good. It really was that good. The restaurant is beautiful. The service, even though he left, was 
phenomenal. He was very attentive. He was very helpful in choosing things on the menu. And aside from the fact that he left and we were sitting there for about 15 minutes at the end waiting for a check, he really did everything fantastically. Don't know whether he got ill or it was just too much for him, but whatever training he had leading up to that point, it was really good. But I'm an the, oysters and cherry stone clam kind of guy. The key, Go to the boathouse for the lunch. The key thing there is, that, and that might be what I do, for cocktails and the raw bar, go to the boathouse. Enjoy your seafood. You know, enjoy that. It's nice weather. Sit out in the And back. then do dinner at Morimoto. Or do the, the, the raw bar and the seafood for lunch at the boathouse. And then do dinner somewhere else. I just don't think for the amount of money that you will spend, the boathouse is as phenomenal a dining experience as some of the other restaurants Walt Disney World has to offer. Now, as That's going to be my bottom line on the boathouse. As good as that dessert was at the boathouse, uh, one of your children came to you the other day and wanted to know if you could get what? I don't remember. Bread pudding. Oh, they love the Ohana bread pudding. Oh, so we'll be at Ohana on our next trip. That's one of the ones I've been looking for every day. We finally did get it. For bread pudding. Just for the bread pudding. Yeah. Are you going for the rest of the food? Or you they gonna... don't even care. They really just want the bread pudding. Okay. So, boathouse. But I have a child that's never eaten at Ohana other than for breakfast. So this will be a new experience. She's been there. Me. She just doesn't remember. She's never been she's to. She's been there. She's never there's, been to dinner at there's Ohana. There's no way you've been there that much and not been there. She's never been to dinner at Ohana. We've taken her to breakfast. You know, if you would take more pictures when we're at dining and blog more, I you would know, know. I know. I know. You don't blog enough. I don't blog enough. You don't blog enough. All right. So, how many Mickey bars? You going with three or four? I'm staying with three. I'll go three and a half. I mean, again, if you're going for lunch, four. If you're going for dinner, I'm down to the three, three and a half range just because uh, nothing stands out. It's a very nice, nice environment, nice atmosphere. You won't go wrong. Um, but when I've seen you watching the reviews of the people who rave at five stars, I just I have to wonder what they're comparing it to. Yeah, and I think that's it. Maybe we have other restaurants to compare it to that they don't have access to living in Orlando. But, you know, Orlando well, hold on. is we've, Orlando we've, is we've lived in Orlando, their game. and we've lived in Fort Lauderdale. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have we have two restaurants in Fort Lauderdale right on the beach. Well, we have way better seafood restaurants in Fort Lauderdale than we did living in Orlando. But even in Orlando, yeah, we've driven down to the Keys to get meals. I mean, it's... Way better seafood in the Keys than even in Fort Lauderdale. But yeah. again, it's what you would expect. But again, the seafood could be the exact same seafood compared to the same. It's all about the package of the atmosphere and the environment and what you expect. Which is, again, the Boathouse has a really great, I guess, roll bar lounge sort of area. Mm -hmm. So if you want to watch the game and you can't get to the boardwalk... Go to the boathouse. Go to the boathouse. All right. Wrapping it up. I am Anna from beautygirlsmom.com. If you'd like to see more of these videos or contribute something to some of our reviews, just click subscribe wherever it appears on your screen. Feel free to comment below, and we'll see you real soon.